Welcome back to Gabriela Gaprod. We have here this pretty cool soldier from our upcoming Untitled game. It's a 2D adventure that me and my girlfriend have been working on on the last 4 months. And if you want to learn more about the upcoming game, you can always subscribe to the channel, I will post updates. And this time we are going to see how to create a 2D shader, more specifically this dissolve effect. We have a few variations as you can see and I'm going to show you every step I took to achieve this. And by the way, this very nice soldier, the shader, the scene, this whole project is available on my Patreon page. In case you are interested, I'll have the link in the description. So with that being said, let's see how we can dissolve this. So since this is a 2D shader, in order for it to work, you need to be in a universal render pipeline project and then create a 2D render just like this and assign it to the universal render pipeline asset. With this, we are now able to create a 2D shader, a lit one or an unlit one. Lit means it will be influenced by 2D lights and unlit it won't. So I'm gonna create a lit one because I want the dissolve effect to be affected by the 2D lights. And in case you want to learn more about 2D lights, I made a great tutorial about them. The link's in the description or you can check out my channel. Now with the lit shader being done, we can double click to open in shader graph and we can go ahead and start by adding two properties. A color with HDR mode and set to white with full opacity and a main texture, which is going to be the sprite of the soldier in this case. Now the idea is to multiply both the texture with the color, so in case you want to tint your sprites you can always do it. This for now is going to be connected to the color input of the sprite lit master, but the erosion effect needs a few more things. The most important one is a simple noise node, basically a noise texture, we need a noise texture and we are going to remap a vector one, call it the dissolve amount. This vector one is going to be a slider between 0 and 1. And we are going to connect it like this to the in value of the remap node. I'm gonna invert this with a one minus node, otherwise it would look weird, you can try it if you want. And now adding the dissolve amount remap to the simple noise will let us control the white and grey areas amount. And as you can see nothing much happens, but if we remap the dissolve amount, so the 0 is 0 0.4 and 1 is 1.4, for example, we start being able to dissolve this. Now all we gotta do is amplify this signal with another remap node. We can say that the 0 is going to be minus 4 and 1 is going to be 4. Now let's just clamp this data to be between 0 and 1 and all of this can be multiplied, just like this and connect the clamp to the mask. The mask acts like an alpha input on this sprite lit master shader. Let's just add a vector 1 to control the simple noise scale before we proceed. Now if I create a material out of this shader and assign to all the sprites of the soldier, we can see that at this point if I play with the dissolve amount, we got a dissolve effect that dissolves completely at 1 and at 0, the soldier is intact. Ok, cool, but we are missing that characteristic line between the dissolved and the soldier that may look like something is burning, for example. For that we need a step node. And as you can see, if I increase this value and compare the step node with the clamp node, we can see that the white area increases and decreases with this value. So this is going to be the dissolve white. And we need to remove the excess. Basically, if we subtract the excess, we are left with the dissolve line, right? We can then control the color of the line with a dissolve color property 
Now let me push it up here. And it's going to be in HDR with a white color and a full opacity as default. And this is going to be added to the texture and color node. Like this, and now connected to the color input of the sprite lit master shader. Once we save this, in Unity now we have something that looks like uh, the colors are inverted, right? Kind of weird. But this is happening because we need a one minus node right here to invert the output of the step. And as you can see now it looks better, we get the line, but it has this dark colors all around it. And this kind of looks like petrol burning or other chemical reaction. It may be useful to someone, but we want a burning feeling. And this is only happening because the order in which we subtract matters, obviously. So I'm going to make sure that I subtract the excess to the simple noise, leaving only the dissolve line. And here we go, we get this pretty cool burning feeling, especially if we use an orange color. And here's a cool trick, if you put the white above 1 and the dissolve amount at 0, we get this pretty neat outline of each sprite. What a cool effect, I'm definitely going to use this in my game, somehow. But let's see a totally different type of dissolve. So let's duplicate the shader we created, maybe rename it, and we can come here to the simple noise and change it, for example, to a Voronoi node with an angle offset of around 10 and connect the dissolve scale to the cell density. Not like this, my bad, sorry. All right. Just gonna set the dissolve scale to 5 as default, by the way. I'm going to create a material out of the new shader and assign it to the sprite. And we get these circles, which is cool, which is quite interesting. Let's just choose a cool color and increase the intensity as well. Cool. Yeah, it's a cool dissolve effect, but there's even more that we can do. Let's just make sure that the zero is no dissolve and one is totally dissolved by increasing the X and the Y of the vector one that we are remapping. Right? Okay, so here's another cool trick. If we use a twirl node and connect to the UV input of the Voronoi, we will get a pretty cool effect. But you don't necessarily need to add this time node and the vect one that I'm adding right now. It's to control the dissolve speed and I just add it for fun. But what we really need is to create a vector one to control the twirl strength. And we get this crazy dissolve effect, which is nice, it's really cool, but can get even better with the correct values. Like 65 for the 12 strand, 0 for the dissolve speed, 0.4 for the dissolve white, and 1 for the dissolve scale. And we get this really cool effect. Something a little bit more futuristic, maybe it was hit by a very special gun, I don't know, it looks awesome. And if we decrease the dissolve scale to half, we get bigger stripes, as you can see. And it really adds a nice touch. This is a cool dissolve effect. And we can still get a different dissolve type. For example, if I duplicate again the original shader. Now, if I change the simple noise to a gradient noise, just we get this. Let me just create a material. Maybe choose a blue color this time. Decrease the dissolve scale. And here we go, we have another different dissolve type. We just need to adjust the remap node of the vector of the dissolve amount. And that's it, another cool dissolve for your game. If you want, you can even play with the UVs 
and for example use a radial share. I don't think it looks great, but it's a different effect as you can see. And you can even use a different noise texture, instead of being a precisely generated note. Right, so there's plenty of dissolve effects as you can see. And that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. All of this is available on my Patreon page, with all of the dissolve effects and the soldier as well. If you want to support, you will also get access to more shaders and visual effects, there's plenty of stuff there. And I want to thank every patron that supports me, and I'm especially thankful for the Super Mega Patrons, which are AI Yetang, Akambi Angelok, Alejandro, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, James Finley, Joshua Yu, Juan Mendiola, Mark Brittigam, Matt Griffin, Niai Andre Manjanto, Ramiel, Stephen Melton, Travis McCollum, Warden Studios, Yayoni, Artem Jim, and Max Nazarenko. You guys are really awesome and your support is really very much appreciated. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and see you in the next video.